Today in Nerd History! Hey, remember the first time that Star Wars got ruined? From my point of view, the Jedi are evil! No, 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 earlier. Now this is pod racing. Earlier! <laughs> Way earlier! A day of harmony. There we go! Happy Life Day, everybody! That's right, the Star Wars Holiday Special is 36 years young today, which means it's old enough to still be living in its parents' basement and lamenting the shattered dreams of ever being remotely watchable. Uh, made for CBS in 1978, the holiday special features Han and Chewie traveling back to Chewie's home planet to celebrate Life Day with his wife, Mala, his father, Itchy, his son, Lumpy. Maybe somewhere along the way, explaining why Chewie's evidently a deadbeat dad who abandoned his family to fly around with a dirtbag smuggler who apparently murders people for fun. Explain that to Lumpy. Your first life debt is to your family, Chewie. Holiday Special canonically introduced both Chewie's family and his homeworld, which was originally pronounced as Kazook in the special. On the Kazook planet. On the Kazook planet. On the Kazook planet. And later renamed Kashyyyk. Meanwhile, his kid is still named Lumpy. The special also famously introduced Boba Fett in the animated segment, The Faithful Wookiee. The Faithful Wookiee was the only part of the special to ever be officially released. The entire special, replete with its cooking segments and musical acts and juggling numbers and whatever this is, was deemed too embarrassing to ever be re-aired or redistributed. The only existing copies are taped bootlegs of the original broadcast. George Lucas evidently thought the special was beyond saving by adding digital do-backs and was quoted as saying if he had the time and a sledgehammer, he would uh, f up royally. I'm paraphrasing here. And how much is George Lucas to blame? Well, that depends on who you ask. While Lucas didn't direct, he did put his USC buddy, David Okomba, into the high chair. Though Okomba did leave the production after shooting the Jefferson Starship musical segment, presumably because the band name pun was just too clever. Prob probably because it was career poison, also. I, I would assume. Also behind the camera was the incomparable Bruce Valanche writing funnies. Believe it or not, Bruce Valanche argued on the side of sanity when he told George Lucas that maybe they shouldn't focus on Chewie's family because 90% of the dialogue would appear in subtitles and that makes it kind of a little hard to write jokes. This was overruled. Remarkably, no one told Carrie Fisher no when she demanded to sing a Life Day song to the tune of the Star Wars theme. So remember, next time you get mad about Jake Lloyd yelling yippee in episode one, yippee! Star Wars was first pile-drived into the garbage compactor 21 years earlier when B. Arthur got up and sang, Good night, but not goodbye. Then you'll come back to 